So in the last few lectures, we learned how to create environment variables and how to use those environment variables in our NestJS application code. Now in this lecture, we will learn how we can load different environment variables based on different environments. So for example, we might want to load a different environment variable for development, a different environment variable for production and a different environment variable for testing. And we need to load one of these environment variables dynamically based on in which environment we are currently running our code. Let's see how we can do that. Currently, we have only one environment file, this .env file, and this .env file will be loaded irrespective of in which environment we are in. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some more environment variables. So I'm going to create a .env .development. This environment variable file should be loaded when we are in the development mode, when the environment is development. And then I'm also going to create one more environment variable file and I'm going to call it as .env.test. And this env file should be loaded when we are running our application in test environment or in staging environment. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'm going to copy all these settings and I'm going to paste it in env.development file and here I'm, I'll call it as development. This .env file, this will be the env file for production. So let me change env mode to production in this .env file. And then we also have this .env test. So let me paste all those settings here. And here, let's say the env mode is going to be test. All right, so we have a file for development, a file for test, and this .env file, this should be loaded in production environment. Now here I have not changed the DB type or the port number, host number, username, password, etc. because currently we have only one database which we are working with. We do not have a different database for production or a different database for test. So that's why I'm keeping the same values here. But in a real world application, you will have a different database for development, a different database for production and a different database for staging. So you need to change these values accordingly based on the environment. All right, now let me go and let me close these files. Maybe I'll open this env.development for now because currently we are in the development mode. Now remember that in our app module file, inside this type ORM module, we have injected this config module. Right, now this config module, what it does is, it loads all the environment variables from the .env file and it attaches it to the process.env object. So if you have worked with Node.js, you might know about process.env object. The process.env object, it stores all the environment variables of the operating system. And when we are using this config module, this config module will also load all the environment variables which we have in our environment file and it will attach it to process.env object. So currently, let me open the user service. Okay, and in here, here we are logging the environment. Now what I'm going to do is for the environment, instead of reading the env mode, every env object, so here let me say process dot env and this env object will have an environment variable called node underscore env okay so i want to read the value of this node underscore env which will store the current environment value and i want to assign it to this environment variable if i save the changes now let's go to the terminal and let's wait for this application to build so the build is complete let's go to postman and again, I'm logging this environment inside this get all users method. And we are calling this get all users method from this user controller by making a get request to localhost 3000 slash users. So basically, it will call this method. And from within this method, we are calling this get all users method of user service. So if I go to Postman and if I make a request, a get request here, the get request has been made. We have received the response. And now if we go to the terminal, 
you will see that undefined is logged here. So currently, the value for this node env variable is undefined. Okay. Now what we want is we want to set the value for this node underscore env. And doing that is very simple. All we have to do is let's open package.json file and there we have some start scripts. So for example, when we want to run our application in development mode, we have this start dev script. Basically, it is going to execute this command when we run this script. Then we also have start prod, which is going to run this command when we run this script start colon prod and in the same way let me also go ahead and let me create one more script to run our application in test mode so here i'll call it as start test i'm not going to change the script here but now what i want is before running the application i also want to set the environment and to set the environment all we have to do is for development, we can say node underscore env equals development. All right. So before we are going to run the application in development mode, before that, we are setting this node underscore env to development. In the same way, when we want to run our application in test environment, for that, we will run this command start colon test. So before executing this command, I want to set node underscore env to test or you can also set it to staging and for the production i'm not going to change it because for the production environment we want to look nestjs application into the dot env file only for dev and test we have created two more files this env dot development and env dot test but for the production we want to use the environment variables from this dot env file okay so now whenever we will run this start underscore dev command the node env will be set to development let's actually see that so let me save the changes here let's go to the terminal and let me stop this process by pressing ctrl c and now let's again run npm run start dev so it is going to run our application in dev mode and here it says node env is not recognized as an internal or external command and the reason why we are getting that error is because this syntax is okay for linux or mac os but on windows before this node env we also need to use this set okay so if you're using mac os you don't need to use this set but if you're on windows you need to use this set before this node env and then after we have set the node environment after that we also want to execute this command so after that we also need to use end like this and here also after setting the node environment let's use end so this is how we need to do it on windows operating system so with this let's save the changes let's go to the terminal let's clear the terminal here and now let's go ahead and let's run npm run start dev and when we are running this npm run start dev what it should do is it should set this node env to development so the application is building let's wait for this application to build the application has built successfully now let's go to postman and let's make this request one more time and when we have made this request we have received the response and in the terminal it should also log the value of node underscore env and currently it is development right now let me again stop the process by pressing ctrl c and now i'm going to run npm run start test and now if i press enter it should run this application in test environment and there the node env should be test so let's wait for this application to build the application has been built now if i make a request from postman 
we have received the response and if i go to the terminal now you will see that the value for node underscore env is test so in this way based on which script we are running we are specifying the environment of the application right now let me keep it running in test mode and let's go back to vs code and now what we want is based on the environment based on whether the environment is development or test or prod and for the prod the node underscore env will be undefined okay so if the node underscore env is development we want to load this dot env dot development file if the node env is test we want to load this dot env dot test and if node env is undefined in that case we want to load this dot env file so for that let's go to app module dot ts file and here what i'm going to do is before this at module decorator i'm going to create a variable i'll call it as env you can name this variable anything and here i'm going to read the value of node env so for that we can say process dot env dot node underscore env all right and inside this for root method here we are specifying this is global after that let's also specify the environment variable file path and for that we can use env file path property and here we want to set this env file path property dynamically so here what we are going to check is if env if this variable is undefined in that case we want to load dot env file but if this env is not undefined in that case this env will be a truthy value and since we are using not before that it will convert it to false so in that case we want to load so here i'm going to use this template literal syntax and here we will say the file which nestjs should load is dot env dot and here let's use template literal syntax and there i am going to use the env variable okay so again if env is undefined in that case since we are using not operator on that this expression will return true and in that case the dot env file will be used for loading the environment variables and this will be the case in case of production when the environment is production at that time this node underscore env will be undefined so undefined will be assigned to this env and at that time we want to load the dot env file but if let's say this node env is development in that case we want to load dot env dot development file basically this file and if the node environment is test in that case we want to load dot env dot test file right and here this should not be a semicolon with this if i save the changes now and what we will also do is let's go to user service dot ts file and here now instead of logging node env again i am going to use this dot config service dot get and here i want to get the value of this env mode variable so when we are running the application in development mode at that time it should log development when we are running the application in test mode it should log test this env underscore mode should log test and when we are running our application in production mode at that time this env underscore mode it should log production so here i'm going to log the value of env underscore mode environment variable let's save the changes currently our application is running in test mode so let it load let's see what is the problem so let's go back to vs code so here we are trying to use the value of the environment variable now it might be possible that when it is reading the value of the environment so for example if i go to package.json it is going to read this value so here we have specified the value as development but it is possible that it might be reading this space also so let's try one thing 
what we will do is when we are reading this environment first from there we are going to trim any white spaces which is there okay and then we are going to append it to this dot env so if i save the changes now let's go to the terminal let's see if that fixes the issue okay you can see that it has fixed the issue and currently we are running our application in test mode that means in this user service dot ts when we are reading this environment mode and when we are logging it since we are in the test mode it should load this env dot test file and in env dot test file the environment mode is test so test should be logged let's see if that's the case so for that i'm going to make a get request to this endpoint so we have received the response but if i go to the terminal you will see that test is logged here that means currently the config module has loaded the environment variables from env.test file okay now let me go ahead and let me stop this process by pressing ctrl c and now let's run this application in development mode and for running the application in development mode we are going to run this script start colon dev let's press enter so the application is compiling and the application has compiled successfully and now if i go ahead and if i make a request and if we go to the terminal you will see that now development is logged so this development is logged because now since we are compiling our application using this start dev script there we have set the node environment to development and when the node environment is development in that case this dot env dot development environment file is getting loaded and there the environment mode is development so that's what is logged here in the terminal so in this way we are able to load an environment file dynamically based on the environment in which we are currently running our application so when we are running our application in development mode it is loading the environment variables from dot env dot development when we will run our application in test mode it will load the environment variables from dot env dot test and when we will run our application in production mode that means when we will execute this script at that time it is going to load the environment variables from dot env file so this is how we can load the environment variable files dynamically based on in which environment we are running our application this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.